Hey painting friends, it's Stu here. Welcome back to my channel. It is Masters Week 2024 and I wanted to create another painting of the 12th hole at Augusta National. In this video I'm going to have a real-time tutorial walking you through this initial base layer of paint to break down all of the variations in the landscaping of this golf course hole. In my opinion, this painting isn't totally complete yet. I am going to add a few more finishing touches. This tutorial should help you get started and will help you with a lot of the intricate variations in the greens and features of this landscape. This painting, I'm using a 12 inch by 16 inch canvas. I did a wash on the canvas with some burnt umber and burnt sienna uh, several weeks ago, so this is all dry. But having this base layer helps me to work on a neutral base tone, not pure white. Gets my values a little bit more accurate and it makes things a little bit less see-through. Um, you don't have white seeping through your colors when you put some paint down. For my palettes, I'm using a disposable palette. My colors, I'm using a few different brands of oil paint today. For my colors, for my colors we have spring green, Mars black, we have Windsor Green, Chromium Green, we have uh, Azo Brown, which is like a neutral green-brown color, Titanium White, Cadmium Yellow, Brilliant Yellow, Sap Green, Ultramarine Blue, Prussian Blue, Dioxazane Purple, Burnt Sienna, Indian Red, this is like a light magenta color, we have our Deep Magenta and Yellow Ochre. I also have a little cup with some citrus solvents in it to thin my paint down slightly. And I'm gonna see how far I can get on this painting with just these two brushes. But in general, I would like this painting to have a looser, more painterly feel. And I also have uh, my paper towels for, for cleaning off my brushes. All right, so to get started with this painting, I'm taking my ruler. I'm just gonna make a quick little grid method, dipping a little bit of uh, Windsor green on my brush and every four inches I'm just going to do a little tick mark and I'm going to do that at the top as well and then coming up and down the canvas every four and let's do it this way as well four eight okay and then going across real quick, just a little tick mark, four, eight, one, something like that. Not perfect, just a quick little grid so I can, in general, follow my grid that I have on my reference photo. All right, I'm just going to sketch out the concept in this Windsor Green because I really like this color today. Starting out with my going to do the base first. So the 12th hole at Augusta National, you have to hit over Ray's Creek. Uh, and this is the first part of the golf hole, then the creek's right behind this. And it's kind of flowy, not just a perfect straight line. And then we have uh, Hogan Bridge, which comes about halfway right here. And it'll come to about there. Get this nice angle here. And about right here is where it evens out. I'm just looking at the angles in each little square in my reference photo, and that is helping me to get things accurate. Painting. All right, and then we've got the spot where the creek meets the side with the green. So that's our creek right there. 
And I'm working backwards here because I thought it would be a little bit easier for this one. Typically, I like to start with things in the background and make my way to the foreground. Um, but the, with this situation, the background is just a lot of trees that we can't really see too much depth behind those trees. So I'm starting with the uh, foreground here first. All right, next we've got where our green is. And this is where the grid method is super helpful because your eye is going to think, because there's so much going on in this little area, your eye is going to try to expand that in a painting. So by putting the grid method down, it makes it uh, much more helpful in seeing how narrow these features really are. This is the green right here. And then we've got a bunker right here. And I'm going to have another bunker. I'm going to take a little black in there. Another bunker about right here. And another one. I'm close to that one. About right. Nope, not quite that big. About right there. Okay. And then I'm going to do my next feature is the top of the mulch bed. It basically comes right up to just under this first square that I have there. And I'm just going to take a little bit of magenta mix in here so I can pinpoint where I have some flower beds. Got a flower bed right in there. And a flower bed right in here. Kind of follows around the top of this mulch there. And I'm going to mix a little Indian red in here. We've got right about here, there's a nice, it's like a Japanese maple. Just blocking that in. Uh, taking a little bit more green on my brush again. This is where the green path continues from the bridge over to this green area and all this is mulch and flowers. Some more magenta here so I know we've got some beautiful flower beds in this area. A little bit more green. Got a tree right here. Pretty big one. Kind of hard to tell exactly where it goes. Something like this. And this tree's got a bunch of pine branches. So now we're starting to get into that upper section there a bit. Uh, I'm just going to mix a little bit of yellow in here. This is just helping me to separate things as I'm sketching them in here. And I just want to be able to separate the trees a little bit because if I use the same color while I'm sketching out the concept, it's going to be difficult for me to come back in quickly later and pinpoint where the trees are. Okay, actually down here I'm going to put these little bushes. Another couple little trees there. Another tree right here. And some shrubs there. Uh, up here we're going to have a nice windy tree. And we've got some clusters of leaves in there. 
All right, moving back over to this area. I'm going to take a nice lighter green for right here because there's a short tree there. A couple little trees and shrubs in this area. Let's see, we got another tree in here. Two more in there. Take more of my light green. This tree in here. Comes about up to the top of that box. I know when we start a painting, we're really eager to just start blocking in all the details, but it's going to end up saving us a lot of time by accurately sketching this out from the start. Okay, and then we've got these two, four. We've got these four big tree trunks. One right here. one right here. They actually come down into the mulch next to it. It's pretty almost parallel to it. Another one with a little bit more space. There's a little white shrub in here. And then this one will come up somewhere right there. The next one will be closer to this one. About right there. This one's the tallest. And we've got a few uh, branches coming out around those, but I don't want to go too crazy with that. Because I'm going to be putting some sky in and we're doing oil painting, so I'm going to get like the general tree line here. Going down a little bit. As we're getting farther away from the main view here. Okay, run back over here. We've got more green, shrubs, trees. The green comes back behind these ones. Another green one there. More light green right here. And it's pretty dark in this area, like a shadowy little den. <laughs> We've got a little tree there. We've got a deeper green one right here. And we've got another bigger one up here. It comes close to the top of one of those over here. Okay, and then I just want to get this green over here. Starts right by those flowers and comes down at an angle like this. This is the T for the 13th hole. And a couple of flower beds in there. This is mostly in shadow under there. Okay, so we got the general sketch out now. Um, next, I want to start with the sky. And this is where I'll start from uh background to foreground for the most part so i'm going to dip my brush in the citrus solvents i'm going to add some of my prussian blue a little bit of purple and i'm going to start with just this nice bright color i'm going to mix in some more blue ultramarine and prussian and some phthalo A little bit more phthalo, a little bit of black, a little bit of ultramarine. Tiny, tiny dab of this um, Indian red color. And I want to get like a not overcast fully. I want to have a little bit of color in the sky, but it's definitely not like a bright sunny day in this mood I'm going for.
mixing in a little bit more white and some Windsor green to brighten up the sky closer to the horizon line. A couple little spots where the light's poking through there. I'll mix in a little bit more of my brilliant yellow. It's given with those brush strokes more of like a stormy kind of vibe, not a nice bright spring day or anything like that. I'm just putting in some lights where we have some gaps in the tree line. All right, so my sky is looking good. I'm going to let that sit. Actually, I'm going to quickly just do a little bit more white with brilliant yellow just to touch up a little bit, give it a little bit more uh, paint relief feel. All right, now I'm going to let it sit. <laughs> uh, next, I'm going to go in, I'm going to block in the color for these trees. So I'm going to mix my white, a little bit of black, an ozo brown color. Um, we'll do some Windsor Green, some Indian Red, some Ochre. And then just some Sap Green. And I think that's just a little bit too light in value and needs a bit more color. So let's do a little bit more Sap Green, a little Chromium Green, Umber. Ultramarine blue, more sap green, and a little bit of purple. One more purple. It's better. Start with here, and I'm using this brush at different angles to get that jagged line kind of for a look where it's touching the sky. Deepening the color a little bit here. I can separate the one in front. All right. I keep going, adding a little bit more of that light yellow. Some cad yellow and more ochre, maybe a little more purple in this area down in here. All 
right. We can also see there's like a couple tree trunks back in here. So we're mixing a little magenta, purple, ultramarine, a little bit of that neon red color. We'll just put those trunks in there. Keeping them pretty loose. Okay, while I'm painting in some trunks, I'm going to go ahead and paint in some more trunks that I see for the trees. Getting like a neutral purpley mauve color. I've got one, this one here. Up to about there. These guys are lighter in value, so I'm going to let those sit. We'll come back to those. spots in here we've got invisible branches I'm gonna mix in more my cool greens and neutral purple and brown Well, magenta and get these little patches of shadow that are in the clusters of the trees. It's getting pretty dark in shadow down here. Not using a whole lot of pressure with the brush here. Gonna mix in some more Indian red. And just pull these. Just kind of dabbing, pulling the paint around. Mix a little bit more ultramarine. And the shadows deeper in there. And there's a little bit of a lighter tree I see back in here. I'm going to mix in some yellow, some of my spring green, white. Just start to block in a little bit of that. A little bit more of it right in here. All right, um, let's work on these trees in the background here. So I'm going to take more of my oxide green, some magenta, yellow. More of my light magenta, some purple, and some Russian blue. All right, I did a little bit of that brilliant yellow too. Uh, and I want this to be pretty similar to this, but a little bit less warm. So that's what I'm going to do. Next, working on this tree line, pushing the paint around, very gently holding the brush here so that it can uh, not give too thick of a brush stroke. A 
following all along this horizon tree line. I guess not quite the horizon line, but it is a tree line. I'll mix a little bit more Indian red in there. And just dabbing the paint here to get that look of uh, some thin little pine needles, cluster of trees, but then the sky is visible back through it, the trees. Okay, we'll take more of that brilliant yellow. Put some of that in right here. And more ultramarine. And brown. The base. Okay, take some more ochre. White. Yellow brilliance too. And I'm just gonna keep that same process, blocking in these trees in the background. Mix in a little bit more purple as we're getting farther away. And a little bit of yellow. Okay, and this guy. Going over some of the clouds or um, sky that was visible. All right, and let's do a little bit more. And right okay, next I'm going to bring my way down this area where it's super dark. Mixed in a few different darker values there. I wanted to get something that's on like the purple neutral side. I'm gonna keep blocking in more high yellow ochre as I'm moving up there. All right, we've got those deep shadows in the back there. We've got these trees started. I'm gonna now paint this tree over here. So I'm gonna use that spring green and that brilliant yellow, some more white, I think more ochre. That looks nice.
I'll take some more yellow and white. A little bit of the Indian red came in there too. All right, and then I'm going to take my azo green. Put some of this in right down here. Kind of blends right on into the deeper shadows. I'm mixing some brown there too. And just a couple little highlights. Are the lights catching it? Okay, this section right here. I think now I'm ready to switch down to my smaller brush. Still a flat tip brush, but a little smaller. All right, I'm using my Windsor Green and my Bad Yellow and my Light Magenta. I'm just going to quickly put in some highlights here. I'm going to take Windsor Green, some of those deeper colors, and we're blocking more shadows. That same tree. A little bit of brown, umber. And a little white. Okay, and then we've got a section that's just like brown and Magenta and white. You hear this tree like hasn't quite uh, hasn't quite uh, bloomed yet. I'll take more just ochre. I like that more. All right. More white and ochre, just to get the top of that in there. And then we need more of our white and our spring green for this nice bright tree over here. Almost looks like a willow, but not the way the leaves are on this tree. And I'm pushing and twirling the brush around as I'm putting this paint on here so it just like goes on smoothly and doesn't try to blend in too much with the wet paint behind it. Okay, that looks good. Let's do more of that. Make more of that nice spring green color. Right here. This is a really nice contrast with that dark shadowy area. I'll take some of that azo green for some shadows on that one. Um, mix in a little bit of black in there too, a little bit more yellow. Get that nice, nice deep shadow right here. And a little bit of this 
me in red. Kind of visible in little specks here and there throughout the crown. Kind of play around with that a little bit here. Uh, next, let's do this tree here. It's got a bit more of our Windsor green in it. And some ochre. Let's do a little bit of Prussian blue too. Yeah, that's pretty. Okay, this one's going to go to about right here. Kind of blocks out the pine trees behind it. And then for some shadows, mixing in a little bit more black, a little bit more blue. And some more brown and Russian blue. Get a little deeper shadow in here. And that nice deep shadow is right in here too. Let's do a little ultramarine. And we'll just pull this shadow up. Mix a little bit of our red in there just to neutralize that out a bit. And it's pretty dark in here behind those nice white uh, bushes. Okay, and then moving down here, I want to block in more of these. Take some more of my light green. Mix again white with my Windsor green. And we'll put this just kind of pulling out from this section with the brush strokes. And we do want this to be separate from the bush behind it, so I'm making my color a bit more. Uh, darker in value and a little bit more on the cool side of green, a little bit less yellow to get it to stand out a little more. Uh, mixing in more my azo with my Russian blue. I can never remember that color. Sorry, guys. <laughs> There's some colors that when I have to say them I have like a brain fart every time and I'm like what color was it what is that color <laughs> dioxazine purple gets me every time all right so there's those nice little bushes in there I'm gonna block in these white actually first I'm gonna do these tree trunks because they are behind the white bushes all right, so we're gonna mix some white with some of my magenta, some brown, and a little black. And I'm gonna do more of my light magenta and a little bit of Indian red. And I'm pretty happy with that color. Okay, so let's start. This is like the lighter value. There is like a shadow on there too that I'm gonna get in eventually. Okay, this one's going to go right here. Comes down in front of these. There is the bunker, so it's in front of that too. And I keep getting the excess paint off my brush so I can get a nice line. Is going to pull up to about right, 
there. I'm going to switch to getting some shadow colors in here. A little one, I'm just very gently holding the brush here so I can get these nice inner lines. And I'm going to take that brown, purple, and some ultramarine blue and just kind of make a nice border on the left side of the tree trunk here. And we can go in and just kind of blend that, soften that shadow up from the just a little bit all right and we can go back with just some light magenta here too okay looks good next i'm gonna do that same thing i did but right over here and then just not forget where these are so here's this one this is one right here mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is one right here next to you. Okay, just don't want to make them too evenly spaced or too close together or anything like that. This guy's going to go right here. Some more umber. And that one just barely comes up out of there. Okay, some more light magenta mixed in, a little bit of ochre, and this one on just to redo that highlight again. And if it starts to look murky, then you want to pick up the brush and start to get that extra paint off so you can not have it blending in too much with the background stuff. Yeah, I'm liking that. One more go with this highlight that's very gently gonna glide on there. Alright, that looks nice. Uh, for these two, I'm gonna let those sit for a bit while I work a little more on these highlights. Just wanna brighten up. I wanna brighten up these highlights a little more. All right, that's good. And next I can do these little white blushes. I'm taking my white. And it's got a little bit of ochre on there, just so it's not pure white. And this one is going to start about right here. Out a few different ways. Again, I'm very gently letting this glide over here. That's why it's not really blending in with the paint behind it. The other one's right up here. And this kind of goes all down in here, covering up this stuff. Okay. Uh, next, let's do... Keep working on this stuff here. Alright, in this area, we're going to mix more of our Ozzo. It's a little bit of yellow. Some white. That's a good base color for this tree. So it's coming out in front of these two. And some of it's behind it. Okay. 
a little bit more yellow. A bit brighter up here. I'm just loosely pushing the paint around. Mixing in a little bit more white and yellow. Brighten things up a little. And this goes right up to here. And then as we get farther down, there's more of this Ozo color. I'm going to mix that with some of my oxide green. And some umber. And this is where it gets right up to that shadowy spot there. A little bit more light is getting in. Yellow and white. A couple little spots. Let's do more azo and brown for this area, a little more in shadow. A little more brown. There. Okay, I'm going to do some of my neon red and just place a couple little tabs of that. To imply some shadows. All right, that one's good. I'm going to take some more white and some ultramarine blue. And I want to add a few little shadows in here. And I'll take more white, black. I'm building up these little colors and shadows. So many colorful. Different trees. All right, I'll take some more yellow and Windsor green for this tree in here. One more Windsor green and a little bit of purple. Just to make that a more of a natural green. <laughs> And do a few highlights on this one. More yellow and white. Okay, and more Windsor Green, 
and then brown umber for down here. These are just in shadow. And we'll take some of our yellow and Indian red and light magenta for the uh, sections that where we see the mulch. I'm going to try this again with the Indian red, light magenta, and some yellow. Let's do a little magenta, deeper magenta too. That's pretty good. Okay. And a little brown. Okay. Let's fill in where I see mulch. Okay, and then over here, I'm just going to mix some purple into that for the ones in sh sections where the mulch has some shadow. I'll do a little black too, it's pretty muted over here. Maybe some blue. Okay, maybe some more deep green and some Indian red over here. The deep shadows. Okay, and then in here, I'm going to mix a little bit more umber and yellow, purple. And that chromium green. A little bit more of that light yellow. And light magenta. Just like another neutral shadowy green. Maybe even a little more purple. A little more purple. Yeah, I'm liking that. That looks good. And we'll do some more purple, our other green, some yellow, get some shadows in there. Okay, and then down here, there's just like some yellow. Uh, shrub or tree kind of sticking out into the side here. Yeah, it's pretty deep shadow under the bridge. I'm gonna mix my purples and browns. And it's pretty dark. Got some deeper greens in the water reflecting right there. I'll do a little bit of yellow over here to separate this. Okay. 
Now let's do some white, some yellow. And a nice natural green for this Logan Bridge. Okay, I'll take some magenta, a little bit more umber, some purple, and a little more white. And I think that getting these little angles on the bridge is probably going to be the hardest part of this painting uh, with me using the larger brushes and working pretty quickly. It's going to be a bit more of a challenge to get that accurate. So this might be something that I'll touch up later, is the bridge. Alright, there's that. And let's do this nice maple, Japanese maple. I just mixed some magenta with my um, Indian red. Mix some more purple into there, some yellow. A little bit of green and black too for the section that's deep in shadow down there. All right, and then for the sections that are lit up by the sun, I'm just gonna mix some more. Mm, just mix a little bit magenta into that. Okay. And I'm just boosting my shadows again. I made my highlights a little too thick. All right, let's get uh, more magenta plants in here. Some over here. Some in here. And I'm thinking I need to actually add some red, some cadmium red light to my mix for these flowers. But for now, we're getting them blocked in. All right. Okay, and now I'm just going to clear off some space on my palette here, and I need to recharge some paint colors. So I'm going to do that, take a short break, and I'll be back in a sec. All right, I replenished some paint colors here and I added cadmium red light 
So I will be able to uh, warm up some of those flowers. And I'm going to try to get the ball rolling here and work a little bit faster if I can. <laughs> I'm going to finish up these trees up here first. So we're going to take some of our magenta, brown, ultramarine blue, white, a little bit of that yellow color. And we're going to finish these ones here. So just about right here. Those are pretty high up in the sky. Got a few little branches coming off of this one. I'm gonna mix in a little more black, brown, and blue. Uh, let's do a little more azo, a little red. Okay, and just get that shadow on the left side. And let me pull the shadow down. And good. And same thing. This one. Shadow on the left side. Goes all the way up. And do another little highlight. Some more light magenta. A little bit more black. And let's touch up this guy back here. Add a few more little branches. Those are looking good. Uh, now we're going to take our Azo with some purple and our Windsor Green, yellow, white. I want to get a color similar to these guys again. Some light magenta, Azo, yellow, I mean, uh, brilliant yellow. And that's pretty good. It's a little bit darker, so we'll get a little bit more. Uh, it'll stand out a little bit more. All right, so now I'm just going to start to put in very gently, holding the brush at an angle, just putting in some of these little pine needle branches. There's a big cluster of them right in here. And this one, a bit more shadow too. Mentally reminding myself that I need to work more quickly, <laughs> keep this loose, not get too much detail. Okay, over here, this one. Got some things up top. Okay, the next, these guys. Two little clusters.
Now I'm going to take more brown. Little shadows in there. Dip in the paint and the, the uh, citrus solvents a little bit. That's just going to help to uh, thin the paint down and get me a little bit more of a defined brush stroke. Let's the paint go down a little bit better, in my opinion. Okay. That looks nice. I'm going to take a little bit more brown. And just touch up a couple of these to give a little more depth. Okay, I'm liking that though. That's looking pretty nice. Uh, next, I'm going to get this trunk going back in here with more brown, a little bit of ultramarine. Oops, that's a little too much ultramarine. <laughs> And we'll put this one right in here. It just comes up and start to lose it a little bit as the other branches and leaves start to cover it. Okay, but that's looking good. I'm going to go back to my super light green and add in some of these little highlights for the shrub behind the Japanese maple one. And some shadows, the darker green. That was a little brown. It's coming down more. And just to touch up that maple again, I'm going to take a little bit more of my red. Just going to add a couple more little highlights at the top of that. So it just pushes it back in front. I'm going to take some more of my red, mix it in with my magenta to uh, warm up some of these flowers. And I'm just doing a little dabs paint on top of the magenta color. Looks pretty nice. Uh, let's see what else. And here I'm going to add a few more little shadows. Breaking up this section a bit more so it's not flat. I'll take a little bit more of this green. Shadows in here. More purple right there. Uh, a little darker down here. Some more shadows under these clusters of bushes. And I'm going to start to add a few little. Uh, Brush strokes pushing around the paints in the clusters of flowers just to separate those out some more too. Show that there's some uh, greens and leaves in there. Uh, so we're moving back in here. I'm going to do some more of that ultramarine blue. Uh, maybe a little bit of that light green. Okay, uh, this area right here, we have more of the white plants. And I'm going to mix a little bit of 
black and uh, a little bit of ochre and purple got mixed in there as well. That just dulls this down a bit. These are a little more in shadow over here. I definitely don't want them to be like pure white this far back. I'm just filling the spaces in between, it's like a neutral green mix. Go back to the shadows on this tree because this is blocking those. There we go. All right, I'm going to take some more of my Indian red, my deoxyzine purple, my yellow, a little bit of. Um, the blue, and then we're going to start down here at this tree. Oops, let's get some uh, ultramarine blue too. This tree trunk starts right here and just goes right on up. And these little green leaf clusters kind of go in front of it. I'm going to take some more of my Russian blue, some Azo, and deepen some shadows in this tree too. This will help to pull this tree forward and show that some of the other trees are more in the background. Okay. Um, next, I'm gonna let's work on this grass, the green. All right, so the bunkers are gonna be pretty similar color to these uh, trees we did, so like a neutral, not perfectly white color. Just gonna fill those in. to keep the shape because the shape is pretty important for these particular bunkers. And this guy too. And this guy. Got my little bunkers in there. I'm going to take a little bit of that yellow brilliant and I'm going to just put a little in there just to give them a bit more uh, painterly look. Don't want them to be like solid color when everything else around them has a bit more um, <clears throat> brush stroke work. All right, now for the green, I'm just mixing in this light spring green with a little bit of my yellow. And this goes pretty close up to the edges of the bunkers. And I think I carried that over a bit too far. I'll touch that up later. Getting that color in here for now. All right, that's looking nice. I'm gonna mix a little bit more of my 
fuller greens and push it around, letting it blend a little bit again to keep it from looking like one solid color. Just want to have a little bit more going on with that. Okay, and then for the area around the green, I'm going to mix in my yellow with my Windsor green. And how's that look? Pretty good. I think I like that more right here, though. I mean, a little bit more Windsor Green, even. I'm just throwing in some white here. There's like a reflection of the light off of the grass. And I'll do a little more Windsor and Ozzo down here. A little bit of brown. A little bit more of that light yellow, just sort of that little edge there. Brilliant yellow is the color. And we'll do this. Mix more of the brilliant yellow, the cad yellow. And some white. Right here, I'm liking that. This is like the teeing area. It's nice and light right over here. And then it gets more of your usual mid-tone there. I'm going to put more of the sap green at the base here just to help draw attention more into the front, like foreground, um, not foreground, that middle ground central area. Okay, that oh, looks nice. Uh, let's work on this area here. Same colors, pretty close. I'll mix in more Windsor Green for over here. Got a nice little border. Okay, a little more Windsor Green on this side where it's in shadow. Mm. 
And down here. A little bit of brown. And then just like that light. Green, yellow. Up here. Show that walkway. I'm going to pull the brush strokes like this so we know that's sloping down. And I'm going to speed up this last bit of footage here while I fill in the remaining sections of this painting. I'm continuing to use that sap green with some chromium green. Little bits of cadmium yellow, little bits of brown and purple mixed in there as well, just to neutralize that green in some sections. In general, closer to the creek, the, the green is a bit deeper. And we also have that deeper, cool green at the tee box for the 13th hole, which is back behind to the right of the green in this scene. Now I'm working on the reflections on the creek. Reflections are gonna have a lower value for highlights than what we see at the surface and a little bit less contrast between light and shadow than we would see on the surface. So keeping that in mind, I'm also doing a mirror image of that bunker. You'll see me make some adjustments to that later. I'm touching up the, filling in where all the water is in the creek, using a more muted green to help separate that creek from the grass Make it obvious that that's water and not land. Next, I'm continuing to use my small flat tip brush and blocking in more of the flower beds along the course. For the white flower beds, I mixed white with a bit of ochre, a little bit of purple in there too for some that are more in shadow. Uh, mixing in some of the sap green with a little bit of ultramarine blue and umber for some of the shadowy greens in between the flowers. Mixing in a little bit of that spring green color for the little bushes that are illuminated in the light. And then using more sap green with a bit of Windsor green for the shadowy parts of those bushes. And finally, I'm blocking in this pine tree in the upper left, closer to the viewer. I'm using more of that Ozo brown color and some brilliant yellow, a little bit of cad yellow in there too, but I'm trying to keep it on more of the brown side of green mixing some purple in there as well. I don't want to have a strong, vibrant green. I want like a muted, earthy, warm, greenish brown. <laughs> so that's the color I'm going with here. Uh, I used more of a shadow color, and then I went in with some more highlights over those shadows just to help separate those tree sections from each other. Uh, with my flat tip brush, I'm then taking the brush and holding it at an angle so I can get some of the tree branches in there as well. And that concludes my base layer of paint for the 12th hole at Augusta National. I hope you guys enjoyed this painting tutorial. As I mentioned, I'm going to do a few more things off camera to this piece, uh, mostly adding a bit more detail right around the green to help draw your attention to that section. I also need to add the pin flag into the painting, so I'll be doing a little bit more work, uh, and maybe I'll post the finished painting in a YouTube short. So thanks for watching, guys. Have a wonderful day and happy painting.